Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. Caught Offside with Andrew Gunling and J.J. Devaney. Oh, yes. Caught Offside from the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Andrew Gunling and J.J. Devaney. What's up, man? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Very Please. good. Pleased to hear that. Yeah. We've had a good week. Yes, you and I and many others. Uh, and this should be a good show. Obviously, we'll get into uh, plenty of Champions League reaction from uh, the various first legs that have occurred over the past couple of days. We've got a big mailbag for you. And I'm actually, not that I, I don't always feel this way when Jeff Carlisle is on the show, but we do have Jeff coming up in just a little bit to uh, kind of give us the 411, I guess, on Carlos Cordero. The new uh, U.S. Soccer Federation president. And kind of put a bow in this process. Uh, yeah. I, I would think. I mean, well, well, our, well our, yes and no. Yes, in terms of the presidency, but no in terms of there's still general general manager selection. There's then, right. of course, head coach selection. Uh, the U.S., as we have found, I think, over ever since the disaster happened. Um, that unspeakable night. I think we have found that there, just because they're not going to the World Cup— it doesn't mean that there are fewer things to talk about pertaining to them. They're just the things to talk about aren't as much fun. I'd much rather be talking about, you know, the group that they'll be in and what team selection should be. That's more fun. Yeah, I mean, we would love to be coming out of this weekend saying, How good was DeAndre Yedlin versus Alexis Sanchez? I can't wait to see how he is at the World Cup. Right. But we're not talking about the nuts and bolts of football. We're talking about the backroom dealings, the shady politics, the deal making. You know, it's it's 2016 all over again in a yeah. football context. Yeah. So uh, we'll talk with Jeff, of course, coming up shortly about some of that. But of course, oh yes, these are the best teams, sort of. <laughs> some of them. Are- I'm, I'm having a hard time wrapping my my mind around these being some of the best teams when you see some of the results that we just saw. What a a divide in class there was between some of the matchups and others. We had uh, a tweeter or an emailer to the show recently. I forget their name and I feel bad about that, but I'll get over it. And they wanted to know uh, who our dark horse candidates were for the knockout stage of the Champions League. And in fairness, you and I looked at it and said, based on what these matchups are, I'm kind of having a hard time recognizing the, the the horses are brown they are not dark yeah or like, they're very white i mean i guess some people might have wanted us to look at you know a porto or a basil uh, yeah there was many think pieces last week telling us why porto may be problematic yeah well we'll go through these as they happened uh chronologically very quickly the tuesday games uh basil and manchester city it was a, a destruction for manchester city i think they did exactly what you would expect them to do now, it was on the road, so I don't want to completely downplay it. Uh, In the land of chocolate and watches and but you know, cheese, we've seen good teams go on the road in this competition and have a hard time. Manchester United, Liverpool have struggled in Basel before. Yeah. So. Um, so for City to go there, do what they did. Uh, to me, it's over. Uh, Basel's not turning this around in the second <laughs> no, leg. But the club Basel aren't over. You'll still have top quality football in the Swiss League from Basel. I only have one thing really to say about this, and it doesn't really have to do with this matchup per se, but uh, the sense of relief that Pep and Manchester City must be feeling seeing that Leroy Sané was able to return. Is... Oh, and from other people, very, very raised eyebrows and, and shock to see him come back. Yeah. This wasn't supposed to be this quick. No. Now, did they completely over um, overblow the injury? Or has he some Lazarus-like powers of, you know, regeneration? Uh, it could be both. It could be that Manchester City maybe over-exaggerated just a little bit what the timetable was uh, to give themselves some I mean, leeway. We're in the area of Belichick, Brady... The only thing that I'll say, they obviously they're happy, I'm sure, that he was able to, to return. Mm. But what a risk. Yeah, but why? You know, even if he was a hundred percent healthy, just like it seemed like this game was gonna be one where, okay, we're good. We don't need to take unnecessary risks right now. And 
Uh, Especially but, with the the depth of their squad, it's it's not necessary. Yeah. So but you know what? He must just be that healthy. Or Pep is just thrown you know all logic and, and reason in these situations out the window. Uh, but maybe he's just fully healthy. And you know, let's get him back into. Uh, they've got a, a yeah. They've got a busy slate coming up. Obviously, Champions League. Uh, FA Cup on Monday. They've got a League Cup right. final against Arsenal, sure. so they need a full squad. So maybe they're just they need him to be at least worked back into into form. And I guess the minute that he announced on Instagram that it didn't require surgery meant that it was a rehab process, probably an icing process. And so if there was no intrusive surgery, that definitely takes many, many, many weeks. Off an injury, yeah. so maybe we shouldn't be so surprised. The but real, we will always be surprised. The real sense of relief is, is coming out of uh, Yogi Low in in Germany. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, so good for them. Plus, I like him as a player. He's, he's of course outside of De Bruyne, he's my favorite player to watch on that team. Oh, very exciting player. Uh, the other game on Tuesday, Juventus and Tottenham. Two two is how it ends. Uh, for before I go into analyst mode, I will speak from fan mode from the I, heart. I'll tell you this. Uh, Tottenham did not win this game, but man, this is maybe this is overreactionary in the moment. Guy speaking right now, it's one of my favorite Spurs games I think I've ever seen. You have every right to say that and to feel that way. Christian Eriksen said something after the game that just—it's kind of sad, but it was just one of the most true things I've ever heard a player say. And he said, uh, "Spurs." I'm paraphrasing, but he said, "Spurs of a few years ago, we would have lost this game six 0 you, this yeah. like to me, this was just the perfect crystallization of what you've seen from Tottenham over the last three seasons. That this is just a different. The mentality is different about this side. They go down one nil as early as they do in pretty demoralizing fashion. For Juve to just run a beautifully set up play like that off a free kick and the finish was fantastic. The Spurs were asleep on it. As well. They were. They were. But. I don't think when you're seeing a free kick get set up, I don't think you're expecting to transpire what did. And right away, Tottenham received an education into just how good Juve are. Uh, and their response was solid. But then Juventus came back, won a penalty on a reckless challenge from Ben Davies, who, a, who, who I, I had mean, been. Uh, I mean, sorry, I know, curse of the commentator. I know, I know. Oh, <laughs> like man, it was I literally. It. Uh, you you probably went into old Gill mode straight oh, away. Ben, why did you do that to me? <laughs> 